JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 Golden Wind does a lot to flesh out its main cast, giving the readers a glimpse into their history and what caused them to turn out the way they did. Be it like Mista, who was unfairly treated by the legal system, or Abakio, who was a cop that had a fall from grace. Though one member of the main cast never really got his backstory developed too far in the source material, and because of this unexplored background, many people have attempted to fill in the gaps with their own answers. So I wanted to take a glimpse at all these pseudo-canon sources of information and see the many faces of Panacata Fuga. So before we get too into other works that expand on Fuga's backstory, we should first start by understanding the little bit that we do get from the source material, as everything we're going to be looking at throughout this video is built off this little bit of information that we get. And this information comes from chapter 479, where Aluso reads his profile report on Fugo, which lists that he was born to a rich family, was incredibly smart and entered college at the age of 13, had anger management problems and lashed out a lot, in one case he picked up a 4 kilo dictionary and beat the hell out of one of his professors, and from that day on, his life had been falling apart, leading him to join a gang and become part of Bruno's team. And on top of all that exposition, other aspects of Fugo's personality we can pick up from the source material itself comes from his stand, Purple Haze, as all stands in the series tell you a little bit about their user. Fugo's key points being that Purple Haze is uncontrollable for the most part, it is needlessly destructive while also being short-lasting. So we know that the rage that he has inside is likely something that Fugo's been dealing with his whole life, and it comes in short bursts, which are dangerous for for everyone involved, including himself, because he's not immune to his own stance ability. And that's everything we have on him regarding his backstory, as post the Mystery of the King Crimson arc, Fugo is fully written out of the story, as Araki did this because he didn't want to go through his original plans to make Fugo a traitor. Though in him admitting that he didn't want to go through with his original plans for Fugo, that implies that there were plans, and likely these plans would have come with a backstory for the character that we would have seen in a similar flashback to the rest of the cast, which is something you can make a fair assumption of given and how Araki writes characters and gives them these long, elaborate backstories and character profiles that sometimes we don't even get to see. Though, since we never saw this, this is only speculation on my part that something like that existed. And so with that groundwork established, I think it's finally time for us to actually look at the many backstories for Fugo. Starting first with the first actual attempt at this, coming in the form of Fugo's introduction in the light novel Golden Heart Golden Ring, which was released on May 28th of 2001, a little under two years past the point that Part 5 had finished. This version of the story tells that Fugo grew up in a pampered life, playing happily with his father and studying with his mother. Though so due to this lifestyle, he grew up as a boy without much of a voice for himself. Not an unhappy boy, but a boy who didn't really have much to say. Along with this, he also had to live up to increasingly growing expectations. This left Fugo with a crisis of identity when he reached adolescence. He didn't feel like he was his own person and just an extension of his parents, and thus he began to rebel. And because of his pampered life, Fugo didn't know how to deal with the stress that comes with a crisis of identity, and his rebellion turned to rage rather quickly. And thus, his emotions exploded out of him in an uncontrollable temper. That in turn led to him beating his college professor, and destroying his life. Along with this, we get a nice glimpse at Fugo's life post him getting expelled from college. We learn that Fugo's parents actually begged him to continue his studies and tried to get him in multiple colleges, but the day that string snapped in Fugo, he became a hair trigger, freaking out at the smallest things until eventually he drove away all of his friends, and soon he would even cut contact with a family that actually seemed to care about him and joined the underworld, likely in an attempt to try to find some person or some group that could use his rage effectively. But even here, his teammates didn't like working with him because they didn't consider his intelligence worth dealing with his near-split personality. And again, he found himself friendless and a nuisance to the gang. And this is when Bruno appeared, offering Fugo a hand in friendship and taking him under his wing, likely to protect the boy from a fate worse coming his way if he were to remain down the path he did. And this version of the backstory, while simple, I think is really nice and works very well with Fugo, and plays into the idea that Fugo has a habit of accidentally pushing away those he's the closest to, be it his school friends, his family, and now even his former gang members. His personality also never allowed him to get close with anyone, and this is likely why Bruno, when he reached out to him, caused Fugo to be so conflicted on the choice on whether to betray the gang or betray his friend. Also, the novel expands on his 
role past the point of his exit in part 5 and paints him as sort of someone who made a tough call but doesn't regret it and fully believes in his friends and supports them, he just realizes that it's not a call that he could have made. Overall, Golden Heart Golden Ring is a very clean wrap up for Fugo's story and the reason that it works so well is because aspects of Araki's abandoned ideas for Fugo were actually reutilized in this novel, making it the closest to canon that we'll probably get in this video. Next up we have Shameless Purple Haze, released on September 16th of 2011 and was part of the Versus Jojo 25th anniversary event. This story not only covered the future events of Part 5, but goes into detail about Fugo's backstory as he is the main character of the story, starting first by giving him a completely different family dynamic to work with than what we saw in Golden Heart Golden Ring. Here Fugo's family wasn't actually rich to begin with, but their obsession with titles and gaining status in society caused them to gain wealth in an abstract way, with his grandfather marrying Fugo's father off to a bankrupt noble for their title, and his father had three sons, and the only one who actually showed signs of being gifted was Fugo, and thus his family's desire for status began to build pressure onto Fugo, his young heart barely able to take the constant expectations for success that his family was establishing for him. And while he was very smart, he found himself limited by the fact that he felt very apathetic about his own success, often believing that he would never achieve anything great or anything as great as the old great ones, and whenever he tried to express this sentiment, his tutor and his family would ignore it and continue to pressure him, only causing more stress to build in Fugo's mind. And the only escape that he had from this stress came in the form of his grandmother, who was the only person he knew that treated him like a normal person. Though, given that his grandmother was from common birth, her family didn't much care for her outside of Fugo. She was only kept in the family because divorce would have lowered their class in society, and while away studying at college, she passed away, leaving Fugo heartbroken and dropping in his studies. Along with this, he was desperate to get home for her funeral, but his family denied it and his professor called his desperation childish. And it was that statement that caused Fugo to snap, savagely beating the professor with the dictionary, letting out years worth of frustration in a single moment. And this outburst caused his family to permanently cut ties with Fugo, denouncing their son in order to hold on to their title and status, leaving him to rot in prison. And it's in this prison that he is visited by Bruno, a man who was very open with Fugo, saying that he was looking for him due to his talents, but he would also treat him like a person, and this genuine kindness and interest in Fugo caused him to become strictly loyal to Bruno. And it's this version of the backstory that used to be my personal favorite. I feel like it gave Fugo's rage a sympathetic side to it, and stuck to the themes and aspects of society negatively affecting the main cast. Though I feel it doesn't tie Fugo's anger enough into his character and only makes it come out in extreme emotional cases, which isn't the case at all. As we know Fugo, from his little interactions that we see in the story, is a naturally angry person and is dealing with a inner rage most of the time, especially when he's dealing with the most mundane things. I mean, his introduction is stabbing Narancha in the face because he got a math problem wrong. So I don't feel like tying his rage to extreme emotional outbursts was the best decision. Though for the most part, the rest of Shameless Purple Haze makes up for any lackings I find in this aspect of his backstory, as the whole story is fantastic and I recommend everyone check it out. Now, when I said that some of these stories were pseudo-canon, this is because Araki did do the art for this novel and all the characters that appear in it, and it was part of a main JoJo event, but it wasn't written by Araki himself. It's about as close to canon as some aspects of the anime are. And speaking of that, these were the only two explanations for Fugo's backstory until December 22nd of 2018, where episode 12 of the Golden Wind anime played, and David Productions tried their hand at explaining Fugo's backstory. Here, much like Shameless Purple Head, Fugo's parents were hard on him, wanting him to succeed due to his gifted intellect, but slowly building up pressure onto his young heart, to the point he began to develop sudden violent urges. And while he was able to keep them contained in his normal life, things changed when he moved away to college, as one day, one of his professors tried to force himself onto Fugo, with dialogue that implies that he has tried to or has done this before in the past. This results in Fugo snapping, assaulting the professor, and beating him within an inch of his life. And while his parents fought to keep him out of prison, they still disowned him after this event and tossed him away, causing Fugo to begin his life on the street, stealing and pickpocketing to make it day by day. And ironically, this style of life allowed Fugo to use his intellect to the fullest, 
even being able to bring up obscure court cases to dismiss any blame that he might receive for dying and dashing. And Bruno took great interest in a child like this and wanted to use his gifts for his team. And Fugo, while warning him of his anger problems, gets mostly ignored by Bruno, saying that he'll just deal with it when it comes up, treating him kindly even without knowing him. And that is a culture shock to Fugo, given the group of people he grew up around. And given this backstory comes from an anime adaptation, so unlike the other two, we don't get to see what Fugo is like post his leave, but we do get to see the final goodbye for him during Narancia's passing. And while I do like aspects of this backstory for Fugo, as it does a good job showing Fugo being pulled down wrongly by society, as he is the one blamed when his professor forces themselves onto him. But I feel like it really misses the point of Fugo's underlying rage, as it more justifies it and sets it to a certain moment, and it doesn't feel like something that he's fighting to keep under control. His action in that scene makes him just, which kind of misses the point of his underlining rage that comes at very unjust moments, and the fact that his stand is uncontrollable doesn't really fit with that backstory. Along with missing the point that everyone in part 5 is in the position they are in because of a choice they chose to make instead of an action that they were using to defend themselves. And of course, as I mentioned, this is an anime adaptation of the scene, and Araki was likely not consulted on this backstory, making this version of Fugo's backstory as canon as any other version, be it Shameless Purple Haze or Golden Heart Golden Ring. But if you ask me, I feel Golden Heart Golden Ring holds up the best when it comes to Fugo's personality, making his anger work well as an uncontrollable aspect of his nature, without also demonizing the world around him to justify that said anger. Though, before we close out, I feel like it would be best to highlight probably one of the best fan work involving Fugo and covering this topic. I am of course speaking of the Dojin released on October 28th of 2013, Jekyll and Hyde 5 Meters, which is not only a fantastic small story set before the events of Part 5 that follow Fugo and Abakio working together to solve a body dumping scandal that is happening on their land, but also it goes into explaining Fugo's backstory. It speaks in how he had always been a gifted child, much like the main story built up, and due to this nature, he's always had issues in team assignments, as he would try to explain himself over and over again to people who just didn't understand his perspective, and over time that grew to frustration and then from that point to rage, and he would just blow up on people over and over. But his parents, given that they were rich, always protected him from his explosive personality, but one of the notable cases of this outburst came from his group assignment on the story Jekyll and Hyde, where he was trying to get across that the story isn't about good versus evil, it's about order versus desire and his teammate just didn't understand that perspective at all, and used story text to dismantle Fugo's analysis of the work itself, which led to him being kicked out of the group, and eventually that rage led to the incident in which he beat his professor with the dictionary, and was later expelled. Though the story doesn't make that the highlight, and I really liked that. That was more of a closing thought to the backstory, rather than the inciting incident to the rage. Along with this, the story of Jekyll and Hyde is a strong theme found throughout Fugo and his character throughout this story, and even gives reason to why Purple Haze is purple. It's clear that the person who wrote this deeply cares about the story of Jojo, and especially Part 5, and even more especially Fugo. And if you really want something to fill that void that Part 5 kind of leaves you with, where you want to see the group interact prior to Jorno's arrival, I wholeheartedly recommend this story. And in fact, I might make a video covering it in more specific detail in the future if people really want to see that. Though, this does bring up the fact that Fugo's role is very unique to the series, and a lot of people have latched onto it and produced lots of interesting fan works around his past and his future and his unused role in the story, and that's great, and that's what makes Fugo such an interesting character, and I could honestly talk about him so much. In fact, I've talked about him a lot. I've talked about him like three times. I have like, I have a lot of videos on Fugo. I guess it's pretty obvious that I find his case very fascinating. And if you did enjoy this video and want to see more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to see my alternate history, well, you can do so by heading to buyshimanetta.com and buy a copy of Shimanetta.